So Raoul, obviously the big news for you in the last couple of months has been the success you had in the Sydney um, tender. How are things progressing there? I mean, we have to take over on 15th of February. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge challenge now to set up the team, install every process which is necessary. And then we will have a period until planned until Christmas next year uh, when we have the final shops ready. So that's a huge challenge for us, for the whole group. New logistic facilities, new logistic processes. Uh, and yeah, a major challenge, but also a major coup for our team in Singapore. Uh, we said always we want to grow organically. This is organic growth and uh, we achieved it and we look forward to it. And personally, I can say flying in six months four times to Sydney is also a challenge. <laughs> I can well can imagine. Uh, you, you mentioned there the, the whole logistics and distribution side of it. Obviously, you're very well known for your efficiency in regard to that in, in Europe. How difficult is it going to be taking that model and, and putting it in a completely different so location? It's, of course, a new challenge. I mean, we always took advantage from our strong logistics in Europe where we can surf overnight basically to Copenhagen, to Oslo, to Frankfurt, to the bigger places. This is not possible. So it will be a completely different process and it will be a learning curve. I'm quite sure about that. But we will be ready on 15th of February. I think it's been well documented that, that some of the companies that have operated in, in, in Australia, some of the major airports that have struggled to make the, uh, the concessions financially viable. Um, obviously it was a very competitive tender, I'm sure no. it didn't come cheap. Um, how are you going to make money out of this? Uh, yeah, I, I can only say, as we always say, a tender like this, a big tender, one of the biggest worldwide. If you make major mistakes, you lose money. If you can avoid them, you can win money and this is our target. And you've also had some, some notable success in, in North Africa recently as well, in, in Egypt and Tunisia. Is that, going to be an, that area going to be an ongoing focus for you? In, yes, in yes certainly, because I mean, if you see Europe, a lot of places are, are given for a couple of times with longer uh, contract periods. And apart from Asia, it's logical for us to go to North Africa, where we find the same clientele, which we know Europeans going on holiday. And so we have uh, turned into, into Sharm El Sheikh, Terminal 2, uh, with Gebrüder Heinemann, duty free. And we have, uh, together with our partners TAV and ATU, won this Tunisian uh, uh, competition uh, where we already have been operating in Monastir and FIDA and now are at basically seven airports in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So a major step, an important step and, and, and of course one target of our list. And obviously those, those areas have been marked by political and civil unrest in, in the last couple of years. Um, what are your... What are your um, your expectations in terms of passenger numbers and how stable is it going to be to operate a business? In Difficult to say, issues? actually. I mean, I mean, Heinemann is a company which has a tradition in going into difficult and new markets and uh, it pays always off. But it might take some time and, and to predict what is the political situation is very dangerous and difficult in these days. If you see Russia, if you see uh, Ukraine, and if you see North Africa, uh, it can also be a couple of difficult years. Mm -hmm. We are sure about that. And, and on, on a broader level, obviously, the problems in, in Russia and Ukraine are well documented. What impact has that had on your business? Obviously, you have substantial interest yes, in, in those it, it has quite some, quite some uh, impact on, on our year, on our turnover. So we are expecting a flat year only in turnover. And this is related to currency turbulences, which are impacted by political in, influences. And the major part is, of course, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Also, the airports where we have a lot of Russians flying in, like in Turkey, but also in Frankfurt, are suffering from that. Mm -hmm. So your, your overall company turnover will be, will be pretty constant then? For, that's for, that's for what we are expecting now. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the second half of the year went better. Scandinavia is doing fine. In Norway and in Copenhagen, we are quite successful. Uh, sometimes over budget, which was ambitious. Uh, but Germany is difficult. We have also an issue that Air Berlin and Lufthansa are in a, not in a kind of crisis but are cutting down flights uh, to, to, to cover costs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and the market is not an easy one, especially if you go to the east, if you go to Russia, mm -hmm. which is one of our strongest markets. Indeed, and you also recently opened in, in Malaysia at the new low-cost terminal um, there, which was beset by delays. How much of an impact has that had on, on your financial yeah, year? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, for the company, for Heinemann Asia Pacific, it's a major step. Because now we are in Malaysia, now we are in Indonesia, Surabaya, and next year we will be in, in Australia and Sydney. Uh, that makes us a, a player in the region. And this was our target. And Heinemann's target is actually in a couple of years to be, of course, a player in Europe. We want to remain market leader, of course, to be a leading player. And we, we don't have to be number one, but a leading player in Asia. And we also want to be a leading player in Americas. Mm -hmm. 
and looking to tenders that are coming up, it's been it's been said that you know you're, you're obviously competing hard in Abu Dhabi. Um, are there any other major areas that you're looking at? Maybe the new airport in in Istanbul. Yes, for example? of course, Istanbul, the new airport, uh, which will be. Uh, an airport for 90 million people in the beginning of the first phase and later on up to 150 million. So a completely new dimension is an important target. And Abu Dhabi, as you said, is also of course an important target. Uh, we have also to go there where the business is growing. And if you see growing sales, where is growing sales? It's in the Middle East, it's in Asia, it's also in Africa on a smaller limit, on a smaller level. But it's not so much in Europe, so we have to follow the track, actually. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we are in Turkey and we want to stay in Turkey. That's an important part. I think there's been a, a, a perception within the industry, especially lately, that a lot of the demands that airports are making on retailers in terms of, in terms of concession fees and, and terms of the contract are being, have been especially harsh. Um, some people have questioned if you know, retailers can actually innovate and still be able to make money and improve the customer experience. You're obviously having a lot of tender success. Um, are you paying over the odds for those? Yeah, it's three things actually. You don't have to sign if you don't want to sign. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, it's not airport's failure if you sign a contract which you shouldn't have signed. That's one issue. Second issue is we are facing, uh, of course, a period of consolidation. That means we have less players and bigger players and the, and the competition is getting tight and, and tougher. And the third one, what I, what I would say, it's market. Mm -hmm. It's in, like in any market. So we, 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 should, we should not blame airports. Of course, it's a lot of money, but it's also a fantastic marketplace, which I give on hold. If you open, the next day you make a huge turnover. If you open downtown somewhere, you have to get along step by step. So we have to face it. It's our business and, uh, yeah, and, 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 and our company also, our owners, uh, we talk again and again what is our future? Should we also take a step away from travel retail because of this development? Mm. But Klaus Heinemann is especially saying, I'm better in the leading position in one business than number 15 in 10 business. And, and I agree to that.